Welcome to Inside EKU Sports, a production of EKU Athletics. I'm Greg Staudelmeyer along with Coach Mark Elder. Mark, you'll play Tennessee Tech on Saturday, but didn't have a game last Saturday. Basically, you're one day off for the entire season. And how have you dealt with practice, and how did you deal with the day off? Uh, well, last week was great. We had essentially like a week similar to spring ball where uh, we had three practices on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, had lifting on Monday and Friday, but it was just football. It was not game planning for, for tech. It was just playing offense versus defense, doing drill work with special teams, uh, working on a lot of fundamentals, extended individual periods. So uh, that was great for, for us to have that, have a little bit of time off for the guys. The guys got Saturday off. They got to watch a little bit of, of football and, and so forth. So that was great, kind of letting the guys have a mental break, a little bit of a physical break uh, while still getting some work done. And then we started up on, on everything this week, this weekend on Sunday day with uh, our game preparation for Tennessee Tech. You've had a bevy of quarterbacks, but there's been a problem because they've been nicked up at both consistency and clarity at that position. Is How big of a challenge has that been? Well, that, that certainly makes things difficult to get into a groove when uh, the guy that's everything's going through his hands has been a different guy throughout the season. And and part of that is we've got a couple guys that, that we feel very comfortable with putting in the game and have performed at a high enough level to deserve time. Uh, part of it is we've had guys that have gotten dinged up a little bit and, and haven't been able to complete games or, or miss the following week and so forth. So we haven't found a groove with that yet. We're looking forward to, to getting into a groove with that this coming up weekend. So it's Tennessee Tech. They like Eastern, a new coach. Marcus Satterfield was the offensive coordinator, success at both Temple and before that Chattanooga. So what kind of MO does he bring with his staff and his team? Well, they've done a great job. Uh, you look at the, the infusion of talent that they have on, uh, especially offensively, with bringing some a bunch of new starters in there. Uh, a year ago, they had the wide receiver number eight, who was really clearly, in my opinion, their best player on offense and uh, he's a very good player but he's now one of numerous guys offensively that are standouts so they've done a great job of, of bringing in some really good talent uh, they are a team that wants to run the football they want to control the clock they want to limit possessions and really get it down to the fourth quarter and and then out execute you late in the fourth quarter and you see that against Wofford where uh, Wofford had a total of Eight possessions. I mean, you look at that, they, they didn't have very many opportunities to score. And, and when you do that, you, you're keeping the game very close and trying to win it at the end. And, and they did that a couple times this year where they've limited people to, to five possessions or less and a half. And that makes things difficult, especially when you look at a year ago, uh, EKU had nine possessions in the first half against Tennessee Tech alone. And, and so they have a little bit different strategy and, and it's been working well for them as far as keeping games close and um, obviously except for the Austin P game. And then and trying to win that thing late in the game. You mentioned number eight. That's uh, Brock McCoy. He's had 20 catches in two years against Eastern. Michael Burnsong, number three, their quarterback, a transfer from Marshall, but he actually was a starter two years at JMU on defense, a new coordinator there, and they're a 4-3 base defense. Yeah, they're running an even front, a lot of quarters coverage. Uh, they do a good job of keeping the ball inside and in front. They're, they're aggressive and they're playing hard. I've uh, been very impressed with what I've seen from them defensively. They're sound. They, they don't make a whole bunch of mistakes. Uh, so it, it really fits with what they're doing. They're very aggressive on special teams, taking chances in that category. Um, but I, I really think that they're a very good football team. And, and you saw that. They played Tennessee Martin, who's one of the best teams in, in our conference and, and one of the best teams in the country. And, and the score does not indicate what really happened there. Uh, Tennessee Tech's kicking an onside kick with a minute eight to go, down eight points, and Tennessee Martin – scores on that and then scores on an interception return to make the score look different than what the game actually was. It was a very close game all the way down to it. So what do you want out of your team beyond the win Saturday? What's, what do you want to see from the Colonels? Uh, I want to see us go out and perform our brand of football. We need to uh, be a disciplined football team. We need to take care of the football. We need to be up-tempo, high-paced, uh, high-energy, exciting team, an exciting brand of football where guys are flying around playing hard uh, and, and not looking up at the scoreboard, not worrying about any of those things, and, and let the score take care of itself at the end. If we go do what we need to do and play our brand of football, 
we're going to be happy with the outcome, not, not necessarily against these guys in particular, but just in general. When we go play at a high level, our style of football, we're going to like what we do. Okay, Mark, good luck in the conference opener. Yes, thank you. All right, that will be Saturday in Cookville. The EKU soccer team rolling. We'll talk to the coach when we come back on Inside EKU Sports. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Welcome back to Inside EKU Sports. Nick Flory is the head coach of the soccer team. Man, do they have it rolling. You've won seven games in a row, six by shutout, big 3-0 win over Jacksonville State on Sunday. You've got to be proud of the way your young ladies have responded. Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially defensively. For Anna is getting a lot of credit for the shutouts, but our whole back line, I mean, in, in the team in general, you know, has to take credit because it's more than just one player. Even Anna is a great goalkeeper, but our whole back line is playing well. Sunday, I sat down by the where JSU should attack the goal in the mm -hmm. first half. They were never down there. I think I don't think they had a shot on goal in the first half. The, the players really stuck to the game plan, and uh, we took away. I think they were very athletic up front, but we we sort of tried to neutralize what they wanted to do, which worked um, and allowed us to keep control of the game from the start. And it's it's the best we've played in the past couple of weeks, and I, I think we. Fortunately, we were able to get the result because of it and uh, had some very good goals from it as well. These goals were tremendous. I mean, we talked off air that sometimes goals come from another team's mistakes. Right. But these were really good soccer plays. And we joked on the sidelines of the coaching staff of they were highlight goals, you know, and a couple of girls had their first of the season. Um, it, all the goals could be on highlight film. You know, they were just struck well and created from themselves, not created from mistakes from the other team. And uh it was good. It was fun. It was a fun game to be a part of. Well, it was so fun. We're going to show you all the highlights, and let's look at goal number one first. It came in the 40th minute from Bailey Bounds, a sophomore, her first goal as a colonel. It was – Bailey strikes the ball very well, um, and she gained a lot of confidence from Friday. She had her first assist as well, so she had a great week and had an assist on Friday, had a goal on Sunday. Bailey strikes – almost better than anybody else on our team. And she just, she popped off a ball that knocked to her and hit it up her corner. The 50th minute, sophomore Tara Kloss, top left corner and a pass from Jordan Foster, who is, by the way, your leading goal scorer. She is, Jordan's having, Jordan's having a good year. Tara as well, um, Tara another, technically, she does things very well, unfortunately, connected on it, keep it low. And not something the keeper had any chance of stopping. And to equal your, <clears throat> excuse me, your career high in goals for the season, the third came in the 64th minutes across from uh, Logan Harvey, Kayla Childs, her first goal as a colonel. Kayla's a crafty player, and she just found the space just in front of the defender, was able to get the, the slight touch just to redirect it and, uh, you know, one-time finish. It's always a balancing act for a coach. You have success if you get knocked back a little bit. Do you do you think about the psychology part of the game to keep them on an even keel? Absolutely. I, the success is something we're trying to keep in check um, from a mentality standpoint to stay hungry, you know, so that we always want more. Um, the girls are so excited right now, and they're so they're very confident in themselves, you know. So they want to keep this going. They they don't want it to end. And I think we're we've kept the mentality of you know Sunday's over, so we have to get back to training. You know, Friday was over, so we we forgot about that after Friday's game was done. Looked into Sunday's game. So the one game at, the, at a time. It's cliche to say, but it's true. And the girls have stuck to it very well. Um, so we're Sunday's game is over. So we're we're into the training aspect of getting ready for the next game. They always say a freshman's now a sophomore. You're a freshman. Head coach, <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you feel like you've learned a lot? Absolutely, and still, every day is new. Yeah, you know, we I haven't been here a year yet, so every day is a new day, and we're still getting to know the girls, still getting to recognize how they respond to certain situations, the right buttons to push, so that we continually can keep going forward in a positive direction. The fact is, you play an aggressive style. the The athletes have to love that. That's mm. a good selling point. Absolutely, I, they're having fun with it, and when they have fun, they play well. 
and that's something we wanted to bring in from the start. And I think the girls have bought into it. They're enjoying it, and we're getting, you know, finding the success because of it. You would love to win the OVC, but do you want them to not look ahead like that? Do you want them, like you say, I, with the cliche, one game at a time, don't do that. Don't Ooh. think ahead. Don't project right, ahead. Right. We have to keep them in check. We, we definitely have to keep them in check. And we can't a- accomplish what we want to end up being in the future by looking past the next game. So right now it's getting ready for our next game. You know, we're not looking past this week. And once the game's over, then we'll look into the next game. Not talking anything about you know, November tournament time yet. Right. Yeah, we'll take the one game at a time. All right, Nick, it was fun to watch yep. on Sunday. Thanks. That was great highlight. Absolutely. Thanks All for right. having me. Appreciate it. Yep. Nick Flory, he's the soccer coach at EKU. Up next, he's known as EKU's chalk artist and a Pokemon super fan. See why one student's work is a big draw on campus. <laughs> 10 seconds to go. in top of the key. Six seconds to go to three. Several EKU sports are giving back to the community. The men's and women's basketball teams both volunteered at Habitat for Humanity's ReStore. At the Richmond Mall, they helped move and organize inventory. The women's team also helped spruce things up at Church on the Rock. The Colonel's softball team traded bats to swing hammers and helped build a house with Habitat for Humanity of Madison and Clark counties. And EKU football players and coaches helped out with the free Sports Blast Day camp organized by Crossroads Fellowship Church in Berea. The camp is managed by former Eastern Kentucky football player Jonas Hill, pastor at Crossroads Fellowship Church. Thank you to these Colonels for showing how much they care about the community. Don't forget, EKU football returns to action Saturday, October 1st, opening conference play against the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech. It'll be a 7 o'clock kickoff down in Cookville. You can catch our radio broadcast on WCYO-FM 100.7 or online anywhere at ekusports.com. And we invite you to keep up with EKU Sports all season long on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Well, that's another edition of Inside EKU Sports. We'll see you again next week.